Thank you so much for tuning in. It is almost New Year's and in the Netherlands that means one thing. People will be making, selling and eating olibollen. Olibollen are a deep fried ball of dough with or without filling. A traditional filling is currants or raisins. My wife and I also really like them filled with some apples and cinnamon. That isn't a traditional filling, but we absolutely love it. Hi, I'm Twan and welcome to my kitchen. If you're new to this channel, I focus on cooking foods from my home country, the Netherlands, and some of its former colonies such as Indonesia. Memories of New Year's Eve or Oude Jaarsavond for me always include eating olibol, of course, spending it with my family, as well as watching TV, specifically the Oude Jaarsconferanse. This is an hour, hour and a half long show with a retrospective of the year, typically a critical look at the overall events that happened. Us Dutchies take olibola very seriously and it's also big business. Every year the media will pick the best olibola bakker or olibola vendor in each town and it is a huge honor. Of course, every family has their own special secret recipe and you can buy pre-made mixes in any grocery store. Now today we'll be making my recipe, which I've adapted to use commonly found baking ingredients no matter where you live. We're going to start by making the batter. For this, you will need 450 grams of all-purpose flour, 450 milliliters of lukewarm milk, two egg yolks, 15 grams of brown sugar, 10 grams of instant yeast, 20 grams of room temperature butter, and three grams of salt. I made sure that my milk is at approximately 43 degrees Celsius, 110 degrees Fahrenheit, the optimal temperature for yeast. First, I'm going to add the brown sugar to it and stir it through. And now the yeast. And we're just gonna let this stand for a few minutes. It's been a few minutes and we know the yeast is activated because little bubbles are popping up at the surface. Unlike, for example, the Suikerbrot, I'll put a link to that video in the description below. We don't have to wait for it to get a big head of foam on top. So first thing we're going to do is create a well in the flour, so like this. And then we are going to sprinkle the salt on the outer ring. And we're going to put the eggs and the butter in the center. And now we're going to pour the milk in. You can smell the yeast right away. Just stir it until everything is combined and there are no more lumps. Another tradition at Oute New or New Year's Eve in the Netherlands is to set off fireworks. Now, as a kid, that wasn't my thing. I had enough to uh, light the sparklers that my mom would buy and my sister and I would light in the backyard. But a lot of my friends would save up their allowances all uh, during the year to spend it on massive firework purchases. So if you ever go to the Netherlands around New Year's, just expect there to be a lot of fireworks. Okay, everything is combined. I've divided my batter. Half of it is in the original bowl. These are going to make plain olibola, somewhere between 10 and 12 most likely. Then the half I split in two other bowls. So you have a quarter of batter in here and another quarter in here. These will be raisin filled olibola and these will be apple cinnamon uh, olibola. Let's mix the raisins in. So here is a hundred grams of raisins that I have let sit and soak for a few hours and then dry very thoroughly. And all we're going to do is just mix them through. I soak my raisins in water, but my sister actually soaks them in amaretto, a liquor, and you can probably soak them in rum as well. That will add a nice little flavor, but we'll turn these into adult olibola. <laughs> All I wanna make sure is that they are evenly distributed, and they are, so this batch is ready. I've taken one Granny Smith apple and cut it into small little pieces about the size of raisins. The, that yielded 100 grams of apple, and I added one teaspoon of cinnamon and one teaspoon of sugar, and I'm now going to mix that through here. Love that smell of cinnamon and apple. <laughs> so good together. Mix it through so that not all the apples are just in one part of the batter. We're ready. We're going to put these in a warm spot and let them rise for an hour. Uh, cover them. I cover them with a lid, but if you don't have it, you can cover it with a wet uh, kitchen towel. While the batter is proofing, if you're enjoying our videos, click the like and subscribe button. It will really help our channel. If you want YouTube to notify you whenever we post a new video, click the bell. The batter is done proofing, so I'm going to stir it to deflate it. 
We're gonna use a very small ice cream scoop. This is about three quarters of an ounce, 22 milliliters, to scoop up the batter and put it into the oil. A trick I learned is to actually dip the scoop carefully in the hot oil. It will prevent the batter from sticking and will make it easier to drop the batter in the oil. We're gonna take a scoop and we're going to release it in the oil that is preheated at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 180 degrees Celsius. They will go in for six to seven minutes until they're golden brown. Don't overcrowd your fryer. So I'm going to stop right here and put the lid on. Halfway through, I'm going to gently flip them if they didn't uh, turn over on their own. Most of the time they kind of flip themselves, but if they don't halfway through, I'm going to flip them using a spider. We're halfway through the frying time, so I'm going to just inspect them. And as you can see, they are flipping themselves, but this one needed a little help. And now it's going to continue for the rest of the time. Our six minute timer is up. Let's take a look at the color. Oh, these look great. They smell great too. Let's take them out and put them on a paper towel lined plate to drain off any excess oil. My brother-in-law and my father, when they make olibol, they make a huge batch and they kind of don't want that frying smell in their house. So they often can be found on New Year's Eve outside in their winter coats frying up olibola. It's quite a sight, but I understand when you're frying up as large a batch as they do that you don't want to do that inside your house. When you look at this scoop, you kind of feel like that's tiny olibola you're making, Tuan, but then you can see that they still poof up a little bit when they're being fried. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna continue frying up the olibola and I'll see you when I'm done. I'm done frying up the plain olibola and it's time to fry up the raisin ones. I'm going to do the same thing, take a scoop and gently drop it in the oil. You do wanna pay attention to the um, batter as it's in the oil. If they are not flipping, you need to help them. Uh, and sometimes an olibola will expand more than others. And what will happen is you'll end up with like a really pale ring on the Oli bowl. When that happens, a way to fix it is to use something like a spider and just kind of push it down to submerge it all the way in the oil. First batch of raisin Oli bowl are done. So let's take them out. It's okay that the uh, raisins that kind of poke out of them are a little dark you really want to just pay attention to the color of the olive oil itself. That needs to be nice and golden brown. After you coat them with powdered sugar, you're not going to see that anymore anyway. All the raisin olive oil have been cooked up, so it's time to make the apple cinnamon ones. No different procedure than any of the other ones. Scoop it up, drop it in the oil. First batch of apple cinnamon oli bollen are done. Take them out. We made a pretty large batch of oli bollen, uh, a total of around 35 of them. And I've put one of each of the flavors on my plate. Normally when you serve these at home or when you get them at an oli bowl vendor, they are dusted in powdered sugar because I only like olibola when they are either hot, fresh out of the oil, or just about lukewarm, and I don't like cold ones. Some people do. We leave the, the ones we're not gonna eat naked, I guess, and we will then reheat them in a 145 degrees Celsius or 290 degrees Fahrenheit oven for five to 10 minutes. You can even freeze them. Just make sure you thaw them before you reheat them in the oven. Before we're gonna eat one, Let's break it open and take a look at the inside. So as you can see, you have a nice crust on the outside and a very airy pillowy dough on the inside. Let's dress them and then we get to eat. Well, I get to eat. This can make a little bit of a mess. <laughs> We're gonna start with the plain one. It's smakelijk. 
It is the perfect bite of fried dough. What is not to like? Let's try a raisin one. Mm. I feel kind of lucky because I get to celebrate New Year's twice this year. Once while we're recording this and then again on December 31st. The raisin one is good. Not my favorite. For some reason, I love Care Stolen, which I've made a video of and I'll put that in the description below, which has raisin in it. But for me, an Oli bowl that is just plain is one of my favorite, followed very closely by the apple cinnamon one. Mm. <laughs> if you like apple pie and you like fried food, this is like deep fried apple pie. Oh my gosh, so delicious. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like and subscribe button and don't forget to share it with your friends. If you have any questions or you want to share memories of spending out the new or New Year's Eve in the Netherlands, please leave them in the comments below. I love hearing from you. I will put the written recipe on my website, twanskitchen.com, and you can follow me on social media. If you make olibola with my recipe, I would love it if you can take a picture of it, post it on Instagram with the hashtag twanskitchen. I will share them in my story and feature them on my website. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.